June 18th, 2010, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in revolutionary Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For June 18th, 2010, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Summer arrives, New Englanders not convinced. Pilotless aircraft in U.S. civil airspace? BP board considers halting dividends. Huh. No more nuts? FAA considers ban for allergics. Lawmakers still haggling over which nothing the financial reform bill will fail to do. the World Cup. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on, let's rock! For Saturday the 12th, Dave Berg, Dead, and George H.W. Bush. For Sunday the 13th, Malcolm McDowell and Stellan Skarsgård. For Monday the 14th, Pierre Salinger, Dead, and Donald Trump. For Tuesday the 15th, Sam Giancana, Dead, and Waylon Jennings, Dead. For Wednesday the 16th, Joan Van Ark and Gino Vanelli. For Thursday the 17th, Newt Gingrich, ew, and Barry Manilow, ew. For Friday the 18th, E.G. Marshall, dead, and Roger Ebert. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torval, and I'm done! We'll have stories in detail right after this. I'm an atheist. 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 On Monday, Fox News analyst Peter Johnson Jr. let slip a meandering commentary about a possible source of funding for the skyscraper plan to replace the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. Johnson's remarks staggered on a knife edge between weepy sentimentalist drivel and ranting conspiratorial lunacy. The common thread was, and I'm paraphrasing here, how can we let these dirty Arabs come and pay for half of our building? Listen, Pete, here's a thought. Start a fundraising campaign on your Fox News channel to outbid the Arabs. Or go have a chat with Rupert. I'm sure he's got the coin just rattling around in a jar somewhere. Douche. An effort is underway to pressure the Empire State Building's owners to pay tribute to a dead nun. Here's me with the rest of the story. Mother Teresa, of whom author and journalist Christopher Hitchens has said she, quote, was not a friend of the poor, she was a friend of poverty, end quote, is deeply revered among Catholics due in large part to the media portrayals of her missionary position, work. Uh, missionary work <laughs> in India. The Catholic League is pressuring the owners of the Empire State Building to change floodlights at the top of the building to blue and white to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the nun's birth. The owners of the building have refused the repeated requests and they're completely entitled to do so because they're the private owners of the building. The Catholic League is now planning a protest in front of the building for August. The Catholic League president, Bill Donahue, has said of the planned protests, quote, I hope it's going to be nonviolent. I wouldn't encourage violence, but I know there's a lot of anger, end quote. Well, if that's not a thinly veiled incitement to violence, I don't know what is. Standing in front of a Catholic church for some reason, I'm Paul Torville for News Undies. Thanks, me. Rod Blagojevich. Lindsay Lohan has apparently reached a point where she can no longer function in her chosen profession without an assistant, and her assistant just quit. Lohan, who is not allowed to drive, must still find a way to get to her court-mandated alcohol education classes or face actual, real jail time. The word on the street is that Lohan is so disorganized and dependent on others that she cannot function without someone guiding her every move. Lohan has a reputation for being, how does one say it, uh, impossible. So, good luck finding a reliable assistant there. 
Listen, Lindsay, not everybody can turn jail time into a positive experience, but it seems to have worked wonders for Robert Downey Jr. In a desperate effort to fill 24 hours with programming that could possibly be mistaken for news if viewed askance through tightly squinted eyes, cable news outlets are leading the charge to question whether President Obama is displaying the proper demeanor regarding the BP oil catastrophe. Thankfully, as the traditional broadcast networks and print media struggle to grasp at relevance, they've gotten on the bandwagon too. Is his demeanor really that important? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Of course it is, because it shows how detached this liberal, intellectual, atheist, Muslim, heathen person is. Now, if W was still in charge, he'd be standing on piles of dead sea turtles, reassuring us that we would be vindicated and that we would take the drilling to Al-Qaeda, drilling it over there so we don't have to drill it over here. I'll say this. He never ceases to amaze. Okay, no. President Obama is not screaming until he's hoarse, and he's not sobbing. He's remaining calm and rational in a crisis. It seems to me that's what we should be looking for in a leader. Of course, what he's doing with his calm rationality is another story. Still, impugning him for his even tone is, in a very large way, missing the point. Well, that's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsoddies.com. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with the Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. It's a whole half minute of sports. 30 seconds of sports. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. Here's your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. The equestrian sport of tent pegging has all the risk danger and the expense of NASCAR combined with the aristocratic exceptionalism of dressage. What more could one want? Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. PC World is reporting on a Trojan horse which can be deployed on Linux systems. It's not a defect in the Linux kernel itself, nor in the extensive suite of GNU tools, nor in any of the ubiquitous server or desktop platforms like Apache, MySQL, GNOME, KDE, or OpenOffice. No, it's an internet relay chat daemon called Unreal IRCD. To read the article, you'd think that the entire Linux infrastructure of the whole world was doomed to come crashing down on us. Oh, a lack of humility before Microsoft! We're so sorry! Come on. It's IRC, one of the most vulnerable and insecure protocols still in use. We'll have your exclusive PassCast weather and the final news roundup right after this. Hi, I'm Paul Torville, the guy behind, in front of, and wearing on his head, News Undies. If you enjoy News Undies, you can help support News Undies by going to the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave and buying some kitsch. There's groovy shirts. Awesome dummy head mugs! It only hurts when I care, bears. So fuzzy. Groovy oval news undies stickers, just like this! And, yes it's true, news undies boxer shorts. Aw oh, yeah! Can be found on the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave. <laughs> and now, here's your exclusive past cast weather for the week ending Friday, June 18th, 2010. The Intermountain region had rain, then sunny, cool conditions. The desert southwest saw scattered thunderstorms, then cool conditions. In the Pacific Northwest, it was sunny and seasonable. And that's your exclusive past cast weather. The Karate Kid. Yao Wen of Huizhou, China, was hit by a speeding van, landed in a coma for five days, and when she awoke, she had taken up smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. This is not the first time people have had substantial changes in personality or behavior after coming out of a coma. What sets Yao Wen's case apart is that she's three. No lie. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Jimmy Dean, country singer, TV personality, sausage magnate, 
has died at the age of 81. Dean, a small-town high school dropout from Texas, who in his later years had taken on the manner and appearance of a doddering cross between James Whitmore and Pat Robertson, is perhaps best remembered for his firing of iconic country and bluegrass guitarist Roy Clark for chronic tardiness. That and sausage. Lots of sausage. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. Remember, News Undies is a weekly show, and we'll be back on Friday, June 25th with fresh undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be an emotionless automaton, slavishly obeying instructions without any independent thought. Before long, I might even be able to teach the local computer know-it-all a thing or two. Eat water!